Alrighty. So for those of us that are cold, I was going to start seated, but because I always defer to the person who's the coldest, since I have power surges, I know about cold and then hot and then cold and then hot. So I'm going to take my mask off now and I was wondering what was wrong. I was having trouble breathing and talking. All right, so let's go ahead and shake it up, get some, some energy moving, get some heat going through the body. And um, we're going to also practice a less meditative start as we do usually when it's out. Uh, we're going to practice some breath techniques, or yama is the name of it. Um, that will help heat up our body. So we're gonna do, and I think I've mentioned this before, bellows breath. In bellows breath, just try breathing out like you were getting ready to sneeze. And then do it again. Put your hands on your belly. See the belly coming in and out. Then it's not up. <laughs> so Dennis is moving his belly up. But anyhow, it's an in and out feeling. Does anybody feel like they don't have it? Not that I'm gonna put hands on. I usually don't practice these um, heating breaths, but just for today, I invite you to, to maybe find Tadasana with the feet about hip bone width apart hands on the belly, and it's gonna feel like you're not taking an inhale, that you're just exhaling through the nose. But you are taking an inhale. Yes, you are. It's going to, and we're not gonna do it for a long time. It will build heat in the body, and we're gonna do something after that that's called stomach, stomach lifts, where we let go of all of our air and we just lift our stomach. Dennis, like you were doing earlier, like we're lifting from the perineum all the way up to the belly button, not with my shoulders, but getting the idea. Okay, but we'll start with that bellows breath. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. So it's like we're sneezing, but air is coming out. Ah, let it go. You feel the energy in the belly? That's like running. So for those of us that don't run, that's about as close as we're getting. And the next thing we're gonna do uh, a pranayama technique and that is stomach lifts. And we're going to, it may make you a little dizzy. I'm gonna warn you, so don't do too many of them. We'll take breaks in between. We're gonna take a very nice, comfortably deep inhale, spread those ribs like you're breathing into the lowest rib. Exhale, and then lift that stomach. And the, if you can think about it, imagine the perineum coming up too. And we're lifting it all towards the belly button and then we'll inhale up. Let it go. Feel the shoulders relax. You missed Bella's breath, but it's okay. <laughs> it's my least favorite. Okay, so let's do that again. Nice, comfortably deep inhale. Let's bend forward, bend those knees. Nice, long spine, long spine. And, and then see if we can lift seven times. If you can, it's all good. Just whenever you've had enough, we're gonna inhale up. And let it go. Can do that one more time. Comfortably deep inhale, exhale, <sighs> let it go and lift from the perineum up. It's like we're lifting everything towards our belly button seven times or not. We're not breathing. Inhale up, exhale, ha. <sighs> All right, so let's start as if we were doing a backstroke. It's kind of 
watching those hands. And then I'm going to invite you to inhale as you go up. Exhale as you come down. So moving with the breath. I might slow it down some if we're inhaling deeper and exhaling deeper. We're not going to rush the breath. As we exhale, there's going to be a little pause so you don't feel dizzy. One more time or not, both sides, your choice. I'm having fun in my gloves, spreading my fingers. So all of you at home, welcome virtual students. I know you're toastier than we are. So that's the good news. Although they say cold helps you to burn more calories. So just think we're burning more calories. That's all good too. So let's keep with keeping heat in the body. Let's go ahead and roll those shoulders back, get the knees going. And then stop and roll the shoulders back, get the knees going, doing the same thing. I'm drawing like a little circle on my thigh, oblong circle. Yeah. And this is a dance, by the way, as far as I'm concerned. This you can do by yourself, you don't even need a partner. And then we're gonna stop again and we're gonna go ahead and clasp our hands behind. And if that doesn't work, you can grab an opposite wrist. Just wanna keep those hands down and I'm gonna take a comfortable inhale. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna exhale my chin to my chest. And I just noticed I got a big sway back going. So I'm going to pull in this lower abdomen a little bit. And then if it feels okay, maybe a, just a, a soft little roll of the head side to side or not, depending on your neck today. And then we'll stop. I'm going to inhale this chin over to one shoulder. And then maybe gaze up, straight up. And exhale, chin to that shoulder again, and back to neutral, chin to chest. Inhale, chin to the other shoulder, maybe gaze up. And this is it, your neck allows, no pain, all gain. And chin back, exhale back to center, chin to chest. Next time I'm gonna inhale and roll that chin over towards the shoulder and then drop my ear to that shoulder. So we're still on the same side. I'm gonna roll my head and look down at my mat. So it's like at a diagonal if the neck allows. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, chin to the other side and then ear to that shoulder. Maybe look down at the mat, again, only if the neck allows. Keeping those shoulders down. And then chin to chest. I'm gonna go ahead and release those hands, place them behind the head. We can make a frame and this is just very, very gentle weight. We're not pulling, just intensifying the stretch. If it hurts, don't do it. Just forget the hands altogether. But this does add something because we're gonna, as we inhale, when we're ready, we're gonna bring those elbows wide, press the hands into the head and kind of offer a little resistance and then maybe all the way up and feel a nice stretch in the upper back, feeling those shoulder blades kissing the spine, and then head to center. Take the hands down to the neck for a little low, and maybe draw a circle with the nose nice and slow so don't feel dizzy. Again, being really aware of how it feels. If you know what we're doing right now and you feel comfortable, maybe even closing the eyes or soft eyes and just feeling, you can take those fingertips down. Oh, just above those shoulder blades, get a little massage and back down. 
Ah, oh, let's take the shoulders up towards the ears. Pause the breath, exhale, <sighs> let it go. So I'm stepping wide and my toes are to the front, the heels are directly behind and it's whatever you're comfortable. We're gonna be doing a forward fold. There's Connie, yay. So as we exhale, we're gonna just kind of fold forward. And if you find that the fingertips are just dangling in space, you have two choices. One is you can bend your knees to get the fingertips to the ground, or you can heel toe a little wider. The heels can be splayed out a little towards the ed back edges of the mat, and then try again. So either way works. And I don't want you to feel hurt by any means. I don't want you to feel any pain. So if it feels better, by all means, a modification is simply bend those knees. So we're looking down at our hands. I'm gonna turn my right palm up. And as I inhale, I'm gonna twist out to the side, unless there's some reason today that a twist doesn't feel good. I'll look out to the side. Some people like to look up at the hand. My hand's too far away from my neck today. So I'm just comfortable looking out to the side. I'm gonna exhale it down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Turn the palm so it's facing up on your mat, back of the hand on the mat, and then maybe swing it out to the side again. If you have any shoulder issues and that doesn't feel good, you can simply put the hand on the hip and just maybe look out to the side. It's a subtle twist or arm up, exhale down. So I'm gonna bend my left knee and I'm gonna walk both hands over to that left knee. I'm gonna feel a nice stretch in this long leg, other side. I'm gonna breeze through it. And if I'm having trouble breathing through it, that means I've gone a little too far. I may have to back off a little bit, maybe move the hands closer to center again. Inhale, we're gonna come back up and both legs are straight, hands are in the center below the face. I'm gonna bend the other knee and walk it over. Taking a breath or two here. You need to come out of a pose early. It doesn't feel right for you today. Don't do it, just modify. And inhale, walk the hands back to center. This time I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna take both hands over towards that foot, not bend my knees unless you're using that as a modification. And I'm gonna reach the far hand around to the edge or the back edge of my lower leg. So if you can't see it on the screen, can they see it on the screen? I'm gonna unwind, put both hands in center and then walk both hands over towards this other leg, opposite arm going around the calf. And again, if that's not available, forget it, don't do it. Just giving people options. Walking both hands to center. Now we're gonna bend our knees. And if you had a really wide, 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 like I did, um, forward fold, you might wanna heel toe your hands, I mean, heel toe your feet uh, back so that the um, spread between the feet isn't as wide. We still got our knees bent. I'm gonna place the hands on the hips. We're gonna keep our torso parallel to the floor. Take a nice inhale and then we're gonna engage that lower abdomen and lift with our sternum and come all the way up. Woo, everybody getting hot now? Yeah, let's do whatever we need to to shake it off, shake it out, find some ease. So while we're doing this bounce, you might wanna check your feet and make sure they're about hip bone width apart or not. Because when we're finished, we've got a lot of heat in the body now. We're gonna go ahead and firm up those thighs. 
And if we're sway back, we're going to just tuck that lower abdomen in. If our hands are not by our sides, and even if they are, we're going to go ahead and rotate those hands, spread the fingers, palms facing the front. Think about tucking the chin back so that our earlobes are over the shoulders or not. We've got a lot of <clears throat> effort in these arms even. We've got effort in the legs. Maybe close the eyes if you're comfortable. And just begin to find a resting breath and just notice how you feel without judgment. Mountain pose, Tadasana, very fierce pose. There's a lot, lot to it, especially, especially when you firm everything up. And if your breath has become more even, I invite you to open your eyes softly and let go. Yes. You just shake it out one more time. It's just me, just me. I like to find ease. So I'd like to do one more. I wanted to um, focus on something we haven't been doing and that is um, a warrior three. I don't think we've done too many of those. So in a warrior three, the shorter the stance, the easier. And there's no judgment in this class. So we all find what works for us. If for some reason your mat is too thick and you find yourself struggling for balance, you may want to step off, but that's totally up to you. We want to think about the heel going towards the instep or the arch of that back foot. That back foot is pretty much parallel uh, to the back edge of your mat. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the front toe in just a bit, the big toe, so that when I do bend this knee, my knee is going to track over that little toe. And if I don't feel comfortable here with my <clears throat> position, I can also splay this back heel out a little closer towards the edge of that back mat. So I'm not perfectly parallel. Anyhow, we all have to find our own comfort level. We want to feel like we're if someone were to come along from the about half of your foot in front. Good job, awesome, awesome warriors. Let's take that back hand back. We're gonna turn the palm up, inhale up or not. If your shoulder hurts, just modify. Pick up arm. And maybe look at the hand if you're able to extend. It's a little side bend, let's not collapse in the back. Let's have some integrity here in this back part that is more compressed. We don't want to compress those lower lumbar. And we'll exhale back into warrior one. I'm going to straighten this front leg and I'm just going to adjust my feet a little bit. I'm taking my socks off. I'm sliding on my mat and my socks. I'd rather have frozen toes than lose my balance. There we go. And besides, I'm getting hot. Feel another power surge coming up. Okay, so straight leg, arms out. We're still doing a warrior one arms, one behind or making whatever modifications we need. I'm gonna just teeter totter, like we're touching that uh, millions of dollars. Let's pretend anyhow. I'm gonna teeter totter down and this is another version of triangle pose. So again, if this other arm has gone now straight up towards the ceiling, if it doesn't feel good, again, you can always do teacup arms. 
And then I'm gonna bend that front knee. I'm gonna bend the front arm, my palm facing towards the ceiling and rest that lower arm just above that front knee. And if the body allows, and this is all, you've got to really check in with yourself, maybe bring that arm at a diagonal over the center of the head. If it doesn't feel good, again, teacup arms, give yourself a break. No competition. Take a breath or two here. And on our next inhale, maybe deeper than normal, we're gonna draw in that lower abdomen and push off of both feet, come all the way up into warrior two. So, so rather than just pushing sideways, I'm using my body to stabilize and release. Let's shake it out. Woo! Anybody feeling their muscles? Yet? <laughs> Yet? Woo! Shake it out. And I always like to bend my knees because my hips get really tight when I'm holding poses. So I'm just going to spend a moment just kind of letting the hips relax, going side to side, bending, then straightening, one straightened leg, one bent knee. And then I'm going to try this on the other side. So I'm going to find a warrior. And again, a shorter warrior is perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. What will happen is your knee won't be bent as far, and that's OK, too. Just want to make sure it doesn't track over. And again, I've taken my foot instead of being perpendicular to the front of my mat, I'm going to turn that big toe in just a little bit so that when my knee does bend, it's tracking towards that little toe. Basically, our side body is sideways, whereas in warrior ones, we're facing the whole body forward. So it's a side body, arms out. Feeling comfortable, roll the shoulders down and maybe look out over that middle finger. Nice job. Awesome. Y'all look great. Or not. So let's take that hand to the back if you are able. Turn the palm up, the one in front. Inhale up. Or not, you're going to feel a nice stretch laterally in the side body. We're going to make sure we don't collapse in the back. We have some integrity here, keeping some distance between the hip and the, the lower ribs. And then we'll exhale and bring it back into warrior one or not. Again, you can always rest. I'm going to straighten that front leg. I'm going to reach forward and then teeter totter. So I've gone into and the hand can be on the side of the leg, can be on the front of the lower leg, can be up above the thigh if this is as far as your body wants to go today, or it can be all the way to the ground. But if you find your body collapsing towards the mat, I suggest you move the hand up. You want to stay with this side body to the side rather than facing your mat. We're going to bend that front knee again, stack that knee over the ankle. We're going to bend the front arm. And again, teacup arms always work. Palm to the ceiling. And then if the body allows, this is called side angle. We did it on the other side. We'll take that arm across the midline of the head or not. It's a nice little stretch. Don't collapse. Maintain integrity. Inhale up, exhale, let it go. Turn the toes to the front and step and shake it out. Does anybody notice that with holding poses, you really feel the strength in the muscles? Feel a little bit of a burn? Yeah. So there's several things we're doing in yoga. One is we're trying to build strength in our muscles. And the other thing is we're trying to notice the difference and it is subtle of when we're holding stuff in, which we were doing in a warrior and when we're letting go. Just over time, the body will start noticing. You'll notice when you're clenching your teeth and you're, you're stressing out, you just gotta let the mouth hang open and let it go. So little balance pose for today. 
And this is all up to you. But I found something fun to do. We're going to take <clears throat> this out to the side. Maybe flex the foot. We're going to find our focal point, bring that chin back, long neck, and then release. And then we're going to shift to the other side. So we're going to bring it out and then release. Nice job. Great balance. Y'all rock. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so it's time for us to start winding it down. And I'm going to invite you to come to the top third of your mat. I was just kidding about winding down. It's still chilly in here. We'll take a nice inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to slide the hands down the sides of the legs until we can imagine um, our torso being parallel to the mat. Mine's not even close, but I can always imagine, and visualize, and not judge, and just be okay with where I am today. So I've got my hands above the knees rather than on the kneecaps, which would hyperextend my legs backward, or you can have it below your knees, whichever feels best. We've firmed up our thighs. Can you feel the stretch in the hamstrings? Hopefully you can. Let's go ahead and bend those knees and see if we can bring our torso close to these thighs. And then we can either put the hands down on the mat or we can grab opposite elbows. If the head allows, we can do forehead to the floor. If we're feeling dizzy today, we might want to keep our chin up. But feel the stretch in the low back. I invite you to bring awareness there. We're stretching out and resetting that low back. Gonna bring the hands to the mat. I'm gonna step back with one foot. Step back with the other and go into downward dog or not. If this isn't working for you today, just come into child's pose. But for those that want to stay in downward dog, this is an inversion. Ears, you're usually placed at the upper arms. We can also bend one knee. Keep the other one, leg straight. And it's called walking the dog. It helps stretch out those calf muscles. Again, if you needed to come all the way down into child's pose, please honor your body. So I'm gonna do this maybe a couple more times. Yep, I'm done. I'm gonna look between the hands and drop my knees. And if you wanna come into wide-legged child pose, you'd bring your big toes together you'd separate the knees, but I want to go ahead and get a nice stretch in my quads. So I'm going to take the tops of my feet to the mat, rock back. <laughs> and if my head doesn't quite reach, this is a resting pose, if it doesn't quite reach um, the mat, we can also do two fists on top of each other to rest the forehead. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Just kind of notice how we feel without judgment. go ahead and lift my head up and place my hands on the mat, hands, fingers spread, um, bring the knees back under my hips, hands under my shoulders, and begin to loosen up this joint where the thigh meets the pelvis. So I'm going to lift one knee and look at that knee, a little more neck play, might even want to rotate the foot, draw a little circle one way, then the other, a little ankle play, and exhale it down. I'm gonna shift over to the other side, lift that knee like a male dog, maybe rotate my ankle or not. 
So again, we're doing a little holding. And then bring it back down. And let's try the wide-legged child's pose if you haven't done it already. Big toes together, wide legs. Forehead to the floor or not. If the whole forehead doesn't quite reach it. You want to be comfortable. It's two fists. And then let's bring our arms wide around to our feet. The back of the yeah, the back of the hands near our ankles, perhaps, palms facing up, and let's go ahead and wiggle those fingers, giving our wrists a break. Again, if we're ever doing anything on our hands, we've got weight on the hands, a modification is to make fists and put fists on your mat rather than starfish hands. Forgot to mention that, so I'll mention it after the fact, just a FYI. We're going to sweep those hands around underneath our shoulders. We're going to walk the knees to the side. And we're going to come onto our hip and get ready to come down to the floor for a little more play. I'm not sure if they can see me this way. I'm going to turn myself a little on the floor. Okay. So legs out long, unless that hurts, because we are going to be switching it up. Want to go ahead and place the arms long and close to the body, palms on the mat. And we're going to do like a very slow walk with each leg individually. I'm going to inhale and bend my right knee. Right foot on the mat. Exhale, bring that knee in towards my chest. Inhale, the leg straight up with the foot flexed, and exhale slowly down or whatever pace you can handle. Exhale, I mean, you'll notice that the lower abdomen is drawing in, and then relax. And the other side, inhale, left knee is bent. Exhale, bring that left knee in towards the chest. Inhale the leg up with a flexed foot. Exhale, leg down. Relax. Find that natural pause at the end of that. Exhale, we'll inhale, bend the right knee. Exhale, bent knee to the chest. Inhale, straighten the leg, flex the foot. Exhale, slowly down with the breath, keeping that core engaged to protect the low back. Finding the natural pause before you inhale and bend the left knee. Exhale it into your chest. Inhale up, flex that foot. Exhale down. Nice and slow with the exhale. I'm a little out of breath, so mine's a little faster today and that's okay. One more time, both sides. You're up for it. We'll inhale and bend that right knee. Exhale it in. Let's inhale that leg up. We're going to add to it. We're going to grab behind the thigh, maybe interlace the fingers, get more of a hamstring stretch. And then we're going to point and flex the foot. Increasing ankle mobility. And then maybe draw a little circle one way. Draw a circle the other way. Pause the leg in the center and maybe take that leg across the body. Doesn't have just the midline of your body. If you were to split your torso in two and maybe direct that big toe towards the floor Unless it causes you pain, we're getting a nice stretch on the outer edge of the leg. If it's too much, just back it up towards center. Or give it up altogether. Today wasn't the day for that. And then we'll bring the leg back to center. We're going to bend at the knee. And pull that bent knee in. We're still holding on to the back of the thigh. 
in towards the chest in a single wind relieving pose. For those with back issues, you can also bend the other leg that was straight on the floor to give you a little more ease if you have back issues today. Otherwise, you keep that leg straight and just kind of relax, which is focusing on a single wind reliever or a half apanasana. Ardha means half in Sanskrit. We'll release that leg to the floor. And keep that leg bent, like I said, as a modification if you have back issues. We would inhale and bend the other leg. So I'm demonstrating here. Exhale that knee in towards the chest. Maybe interlace feet behind the thigh and extend the leg up to the ceiling to point and flex the foot. Maybe draw a little circle, a little baseball on the ceiling. Sort of a circle, a lumpy circle. It's all good. And then reversing it, of course. You may still have your right leg back, I mean bent. If you'd like, you can try straightening out, make sure it doesn't hurt your back or you can keep it bent. The next move we'll make is we'll take this leg and we're gonna go across the midline of the body. It doesn't have to be far. And maybe direct those toes towards the floor unless that causes you any pain. We believe no pain, all gain. Feeling a sensation, but not pain. And breathing, soft face. helping to align the spine. And then we'll release that foot to the mat. If the right leg was out long, we're gonna bend that. We're gonna exhale it in towards our chest. And then we're gonna take, so it's the right leg towards the chest. I'm gonna take the left hand onto the ankle and place it on my left thigh above the kneecap. We'll be doing a, a reverse pigeon on our backs. It's another way to get into the piriformis muscle. And for some people, this is as far as comfortable and that's okay too. You might take your right hand and just place it at the inner thigh, just rest it there. We're not pushing that bent leg away. We've got a little bit of flex in the foot though. Let's try to see if we've let the foot just kind of hang out. Let's get a little flex in that foot. For those that want to go deeper, I'll take my right hand through this upside down triangle. As I exhale, I lift the foot up and grab behind the thigh. The other hand, my left hand meets it. And I very gently pull in that back leg. Now, if anybody wants more core work, you can lift the shoulders and the head off the mat. Keep the face more or less facing the ceiling rather than chin to chest. And you get a little more core work or we just keep the head down on the mat. Just saying there's lots of different ways to add stuff to a pose. So wherever you've gone, if you did have your head up, I'm going to invite you to bring the head back down to the mat. Tuck the chin in so you've got some length there. Become aware, deepening the breath, but especially that exhale, just really with the eyes closed, I encourage that. Just noticing where you're feeling the sensation and sending the exhale to that area.
Perhaps lengthening that exhale, encouraging those areas to relax. If it's too much, you can always back off with the pull on that back bent leg. Straighten the arms more rather than bent elbows. And then we're gonna unwind. We're gonna bring that back foot to the mat for those of us that lifted it and unwind. I invite you to widen the feet, let the knees rest against each other in kind of a modified version of um, corpse pose that we do for Shavasana for those of us that have back issues. And just put your hands on your belly just for a moment and just Take a deep breath and exhale with a soft sigh. Just let go for a moment. And just notice how you feel. Just developing some interoperception, interoperception, interoperception. I'm having trouble with my lips today. Hmm, that's interesting. Interoception. So that's an inward awareness and proprioception is an outward awareness with the eyes closed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that on the other side. Open our eyes if they were closed. I'm going to take a comfortably deep inhale and as I exhale, I'm going to bring the left knee in towards my chest and I'm going to reach over with my right hand to the ankle left ankle and place it on the right thigh. And again, the modification is just to sit here, maybe place that left hand at the inner edge of your um, the thigh, closer towards the pelvis, just let it rest. Flex the foot. For those that wanna go further, we exhale and lift that back foot off. We take the left hand through the upside down triangle, interlace the fingers perhaps, or not, you don't even have to pull, you can keep the arms long. But if you can get a little bend in the elbows, you can take your left elbow and place it against the inner thigh of your left front leg. Closing our eyes again, if you're comfortable, I invite you to be aware of the breath. Maybe make that exhale longer, deeper, and imagine sending that exhale to the areas of greatest sensation. <clears throat> Getting into the piriformis muscle, encouraging that muscle to relax and let go. Breathing deeper than normal if possible, lengthening that exhale. And then we'll release that back foot for those of us that lifted it off the ground and unwind and we're gonna roll over into fetal position. We're gonna extend our arms straight out from the chest. <clears throat> Lower arm straight out, upper arm straight out, palm to palm. And again, if you have shoulder issues, you will want to modify rather than lift the arm up and over. You might want to keep it, the hand near the hips or just place the arm and just roll over. But for those of us who are not experiencing shoulder problems today, we're going to open our eyes softly. We're going to watch this top thumb. We're going to inhale all the way over that hand. Let the head roll, exhale. When we're ready and bring it back. Keeping those eyes soft. And again, if you have shoulder problems, you don't need to bring the hand all the way back. You would just turn the head towards the back part. Moving at your own pace with the breath, a nice long, it helps lengthen the inhale. And exhale, noticing the pause. I can't, can't say that enough. There's a natural pause at the end of the exhale so you don't feel like you're hyperventilating when we're deeper breathing. Moving at your own pace. 
So this is more of a, a thoracic and cervical spine twist. Doesn't involve the lower back as much. And maybe one more time. And when you're finished, we're gonna roll over to the other side. Doing the exact same thing on the other side. Extending, bending those knees, knees resting against each other, feet together, inner edges touching, extending our arms out in front of the chest. And again, being mindful if we do have shoulder problems, we don't have to have palm to palm, we can place one hand on our top thigh. And as we move our head back, it keeps us from having to open up that shoulder. But for those that aren't, we're gonna practice just like we did before. And there is no best way. We'll inhale, soft eyes up and over. Maybe find a little pause at the top of the inhale or not and then exhale palm to palm. It's kind of stretching out the whole body, opening that chest space and allowing the neck to release tension by letting the head roll. And then I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes and just feel this as if you were watching the top thumb. This is proprioception, which is Visualizing body movement in space, but without the vision. So just sensing our body in space. The reason we want to build on this is because what happens if you wake up in the middle of the night, have to use the restroom, and it's really, really dark. You don't want to trip over stuff. You want to just kind of sense what's out there. Sense your movement, sense what's around you. And the last one. And when you're finished, I invite you to close your eyes if they're not already closed and just notice how you feel. Once more, checking in with the body, bringing body awareness to the mind without vision, that interoception. And then we'll prepare for final relaxation, Shavasana. So we know that we can lie on our mat. We might take a blanket to cover ourselves. If you're cold, if you've taken your socks off like I did, you might wanna put your socks back on. Maybe I'm the only one. I've got cotton socks and they tend to stretch out on my mat. So we know that we can lay with our legs out long for uh, final relaxation and corpse pose. It can be wider or whatever feels best. Arms away from the body, palms up, I'll flatten those shoulder blades on the mat. We put it Bend at the elbows, hands can go on the stomach, or we can modify by bending both knees, legs, feet a little wider towards the edges of the mat so that there's no tension in your thighs and the knees rest against each other. Or you can use a chair if you happen to have one nearby to do legs up the wall, a half version, a modified version. So finding what feels best to you right this very moment I encourage you to bring awareness to the eyes, they're closed and sense the muscles relaxing around those eyes. And feeling the forehead go loose and lax. Cheeks soften.
We notice our jaw and help it to soften, separating the teeth slightly. Lips either lightly together or slightly apart. Being aware of where we're holding additional tension, perhaps in the tongue, if it's stuck to the roof of the mouth, maybe let it drift to the bottom. Feeling the resting breath, the effortless resting breath, feeling it. The inhale entering the nose. And feeling the exhale when it leaves. You have nothing to do except to rest and let go. I invite you to bring awareness to the space between the eyebrows. And then take your awareness down the bridge of the nose to the right nostril. Feeling the coolness of each inhale through the right nostril only. Feeling the warmth of the exhale through the right nostril. Not to worry, you can't get it wrong. Don't struggle if you're having trouble isolating the right nostril. It will come in time. Just feeling that breath primarily through the right nostril, that effortless inhale and exhale. And then shifting awareness from the right nostril to the left nostril. Becoming aware of the Cool inhale through the left nostril and the warm exhale. Gently release that and shift awareness to the right ear, the outer folds of the right ear. Hearing any sound through the right ear canal. Or maybe it's silence for those at home practicing. We're gonna gently let go of that and then shift over to the left ear. Sensing the outer folds of the left ear.
hearing any sound or even hearing silence, sensing the silence. That's the way it is at home for you today. Being aware of sound through the left inner ear, the left inner ear canal. And then we'll shift awareness once more shifting our awareness up above the crown of the head. Imagine a, a beautiful golden light above the crown of the head and feel that light, that healing light beginning to surround the outer edges of the body. and connect just below the feet, imagining that light being filled with love and healing energy, maybe even feeling that light spread. Feeling that light of protection and love and healing energy spread to other people, places, and things. Just visualizing that in your mind's eye. Bringing awareness, bringing that light back to your own body. Inhaling that light or imagine inhaling that light, letting it fill the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms and the hands. Letting that light flow from the chest, the heart center, down the torso and the back body. And filling the legs and the feet. The body's a glow inside and out with love, healing energy, and protection. Beginning to make subtle movements to gently wake the body. Stretching if that's what the body needs or if the legs are out long and you feel like you wanna pull both bent knees into the chest or just simply wiggling fingers and toes. If the legs are out long, I invite you to bend them. Taking your time, there's no rush. Finding your way over to a comfortable fetal position. Maybe opening the mouth wide to reset the brain. Fluttering the eyelids. For those that perhaps were using a chair, you would have taken those legs off the chair and rolled over to your side. And then prepare to find yourself a comfortable seated position using the top hand, bottom elbow, thighs. Taking your time, the hardest part, coming out of Shavasana. They had it right in kindergarten. 
<laughs> nap time. Even if it's a short one, just a little break from everyday stressors and allowing our body to rest and integrate earlier movements. So I'm gonna invite you to bring your hands to your chest if you care to join me. It's prayer hands, it's called the Anjali Mudra. And we'll inhale, perhaps the arms up, maybe it's just about forehead level if the shoulders hurt or up higher. Exhale, we'll just kind of open and let those arms float down to our sides. Palms up. Taking a moment, maybe closing your eyes and thinking about what you'd like to add to your life and imagine you holding that in both hands, whatever it is. And whatever gift that is for you today, let's inhale that gift up. Bring those hands together in prayer above the head or at head level and Bring those prayer hands to our heart. Acting as if whatever it is we desired has been given to us, it's been received. Namaste. Thank you for sharing my practice. I've lost Dennis. And have a wonderful weekend ahead.